Let's move on to letter B. We are asked to find the displacement and the distance traveled by the object from the point 0, 0, negative 1 to the point 0, pi, negative 1. So the first thing we need to do is to find t such that r of t is this vector. So we refer to this function and it is easy to see that t here should be 0. Also, we need to find t such that r of t is this vector and it is clear that from here, t should be pi. Hence, the displacement traveled by the object from the point 0, 0, negative 1 to the point 0, pi, negative 1 is the displacement traveled by the object from t equals 0 to t equals pi and that is given by the difference r of pi minus r of 0. So we just get the difference of these two vectors and that is precisely the vector 0, pi, 0. Now for the distance, we recall that the magnitude of r prime of t is equal to square root of 5. We got this from the previous sub-item. And hence, the distance traveled by the object from t equals 0 to t equals pi is given by this integral, which simplifies to this integral since r prime, magnitude of r prime is is square root of 5 and this is very simple if you integrate and even weight you'll get square root of 5 pi next let's do letter c we want to find the scalar tangential and normal components of the acceleration when t equals pi over 4 let's first find the scalar tangential component for that let's recall our velocity function our acceleration function and the formula for our scalar tangential component. So we want a sub t of pi over 4. For that, we need v of pi over 4, its magnitude, and a of pi over 4. So let's find v of pi over 4. We just refer to this function and let t be pi over 4. For the first component, we have 2 cosine 2 times pi over 4, or 2 cosine pi over 2, or 2 times 0. So we have 0. For the second, retained, 1 is retained. For the third, we have 2 sine 2 times pi over 4, or 2 times sine pi over 2, or 2 times 1. So we have 2. Hence, the magnitude of this vector is equal to 0 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared square root, and this is just square root of 5. Now, for a of pi over 4, we look at a of t. And let t be, five, be pi over 4 for, uh, for the first component, we have negative 4 sine of pi over 2, or negative 4. For the second, 0 will be retained. And for the third, we have 4 cosine pi over 2, or 4 times 0, so we have 0. Hence, we may now compute for a sub t of pi over 4. So we get the bad product of the two vectors, and we divide by square root of 5. The dot product of the two vectors is given by 0 times negative 4 plus 1 times 0 plus 2 times 0 all over square root of 5 and we get 0. Hence, the scalar tangential component of our acceleration when t is pi over 4 is 0. Now, as a remark, we try to find a sub t of t for any t. Let's do that. So, we need v of t again. We need a of t. We need the formula for our scalar tangential component and we need the magnitude of v of t. This is just a square root of 5. This is from uh, sub-item A. Uh, the magnitude of v of t is just equal to the magnitude of r prime of t. This is, just, this is also just our speed. Alright, so we want a sub t of t for any t. So this is equal to this. We want the dot product of the two vectors and divide by square root of 5. So we have 2 cosine 2t times negative 4 sine 2t plus 1 times 0 plus 2 sine 2t times 4 cosine 2t all over square root of 5. If we simplify, we get negative 8 cosine 2t sine 2t plus 8 cosine 2t sine 2t all over square root of 5 or we have 0. This means that in fact, the scalar tangential component is 0 not just for t equals pi over 4, but for all t. And this should not be a surprise to us because we have a constant speed. 
And what does a sub t of t give us? a sub t of t gives the rate at which the object speed is changing with respect to time t. And since we have a constant speed, the rate of change of the speed should equal zero. Alright, let's move on to the scalar normal component. For that, let's recall the formula. So we need v, we want a sub n of pi over 4. So again, we need v of pi over 4, a of pi over 4, and the magnitude of v of pi over 4. So let's recall those vectors. We have v of pi over 4 equal to this vector, a of pi over 4 equal to this vector, and the magnitude of v of pi over 4 equal to the scalar. We want v of pi over 4 cross a of pi over 4, so let's solve for that. To solve for this cross product, it will help us if we write down this array, whose first row consists of the components of v of pi over 4, and second row consists of the exponent of the components of a of pi over 4. To get the first component of our cross product, what we do is we ignore the first column, so we are left with this 2 by 2 array, and we get the difference of the product of the anti-diagonal of the diagonal and the product of the anti-diagonal. So we have 1 times 0 minus 2 times 0, or 0 minus 0. So the first component is 0. For the second, we go back to our original array, and this time ignore the second column. So we have now this 2 by 2 array. And what we do is we get the difference of the product of the anti-diagonal and the product of the diagonal. So we have 2 times negative 4 minus 0 times 0, or negative 8 minus 0. So we have negative 8 as the second component. For the third component, we go back again to our uh, original array, and this time we ignore the third column, so we have this 2 by 2 array. And similar to the first column, or the first component, we get the we get the difference of the product of the diagonal and the product of the anti-diagonal. So we have 0 times 0 minus 1 times negative 4, or 0 minus negative 4. So we have the third component to be 4. But we want the magnitude, so let's get the magnitude of this vector. Let's get the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So we have 64 plus 16. You have 80. So, the magnitude is square root of 80. Therefore, the scalar normal component from here is equal to this one. That's equal to square root of 80 all over square root of 5. And if you simpli simplify, you'll get 4. So, the scalar normal component when p equals pi over 4 is 4. That's it for number 1. Let's move on to the next item. For number 2, an insect moves in space with velocity v of t equals e raised to 2t, 2 e raised to t, and 2. The insect is at the vector negative 1, 1, 0 when t equals 0. Find the position vector r of t of the insect at any time t, the acceleration at any time t, the distance traveled by the insect from t equals 0 to t equals 1, and the scalar tangential and normal components of the insect's acceleration when t equals 0. So let's do letter A. For A, we want the position vector r of t. We are given v of t, and let's recall the relationship with t, between the two. We know that v of t is the first derivative of r of t. So if we want to retrieve r from, from v, what we need to do is we integrate v of t. And since this is a vector-valued function, we integrate component-wise. So for the first component, we have the integral of e raised to 2t dt. We have e raised to 2t over 2 plus an arbitrary constant c1. For the second component, we have 2 e raised to t plus c2. And for the third component, we have 2t plus an arbitrary constant c3. Now we solve for c1, c2, and c3. And we use the fact that the insect is at this vector when t equals 0. So what does that mean? That means that r of 0 is equal to this vector. But we know that r of t is equal to this vector function. So when t equals 0, r of 0 should equal to this vector. And when t equals 0, this vector is precisely 1 half plus c1, 2 plus c2, and c3. 
So to get C1, C2, and C3, we equate component-wise. We have that the first uh, components should be equal. So we have negative 1 equals 1 half plus C1. And that forces C1 to be negative 3 halves. For the second components to be equal, we have 1 equals 2 plus C2. We should have C2 equals negative 1. And for the third components, we have C3 equals 0. Therefore, our position function is given by this vector valued function. It's e raised to 2t over 2 minus 3 halves, 2 e raised to t minus 1, and 2t. Alright, let's go to letter B. We want to find now the acceleration at any time t. So recall that a of t, this time, is v prime of t. So if we want a of t, what we do is we differentiate v of t. And this is a vector valued function, so we differentiate component wise. So the, co the first component of a, a of t now is the, first de is the derivative of the first component, which is 2 e raised to 2t. For the second component, we differentiate 2 e raised to t, and the derivative is just 2 e raised to t. For the third component, we differentiate 2, and the derivative is 0. And this is your acceleration at any time t. Next, let's find the distance traveled by the insect from t equals 0 to t equals 1. So let's recall, this is the formula if you want a distance traveled by the object from 0 to 1. So we need the magnitude of r prime of t or the magnitude of v of t. Since we are given v of t, we can solve for this one. So let's solve for the magnitude of v of t. This is just the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. Let us simplify. We get e raised to 4t plus 4 e raised to 2t plus 4. And notice that this one is a perfect square trinomial. That is just the square of e raised to 2t plus 2. Hence, the magnitude of v of t is e raised to 2t plus 2. Hence, we can find now the distance. The distance is given by this integral. Let's integrate this function. We get e raised to 2t over 2 plus 2t, and we evaluate from 0 to 1. Now, when t equals 1, we have this one equal to e squared over 2 plus 2. While when t equals 0, we have this one 1 half plus 0. So we have minus 1 half. Therefore, the distance traveled by the insect from t equals 0 to t equals 1 is e squared over 2 plus 3 halves. Let's do the final sub item for number 2. We want the scalar tangential and normal components of the insect's acceleration when t equals 0. So again, let's start with the scalar tangential component. So we need to recall the formula for the scalar tangential component and uh, the acceleration function and the magnitude of v of t. Alright. So let's find v of 0. We need v of 0. Let's refer to this function. Let t be 0 and we get that v of 0 is this vector. You get 1, 2, and 2. We also need a of 0. And for that, we refer to this function, and you let t be 0, and you get the vector 2, 2, 0. For the magnitude of v of t, we refer to this one, and you let t be 0, and you get that the magnitude of v of 0 is 1 plus 2 or 3. Now we can solve for the scalar tangential component when t is 0 is equal to the dot product of these two vectors all over 3. The dot product of these two vectors is 1 times 2 plus 2 times 2 plus 2 times 0. That is just 6. You divide by 3, you get 2. Therefore, the scalar tangential component of your acceleration when t is 0 is equal to 2. Let's go to the scalar normal component. Let's recall the formula for the scalar normal component. Recall v of 0 is this vector, a of 0 is that vector, and the magnitude of v of 0 is 3. Again, we need v of 0 cross a of 0. And for us to get this cross product, we need to write down this array. Again, this array, 
uh, its first row consists of the components of V of 0, second row consists of the components of A of 0. So to get the first component, we ignore the first column, so we have this 2 by 2 array, and we get the difference of the product of the diagonal and the product of the anti-diagonal. So we have 2 times 0 minus 2 times 2, that's 0 minus 4, we get negative 4. For the second component, we ignore the second column, so we get this array, we get the difference of the product of the anti-diagonal and the product of the diagonal. So we have 4, 2 times 2, minus 1 times 0, or 4 minus 0. So you have 4. And finally, for the third component, you ignore the third column. So we are left with this 2 by 2 array, and similar to the first component, we get the difference of the product of the diagonal and the product of the anti-diagonal. So we have 2, 1 times 2, minus 2 times 2, or 2 minus 4, so we have negative 2. We need, the, we need the magnitude. So let's get the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. You have 16 plus 16 plus 4. You'll get 36, and the square root of that is 6. Therefore, the scalar norm, normal component of your acceleration when t is 0 is equal to 6 over 3 or 2. And that's your scalar normal component. This completes uh, the solution for number 2.